ride and welcome back to Saturday Night Chit Chat with Freak Base. And uh, this is so cool. Um, it's really cool the way that we connected. I've seen Peter um, different spots over the years. We bump into each weird place. I think probably the first, last time I saw him actually in person was at Brooklyn Bowl with the new Master Sounds when we were both sitting in with them. And um, so, yeah, so now he's here on this, uh, this show. I'm super excited to have him on. And uh, everybody, please welcome Mr. Peter Levin, uh, Greg Allman Band, Blind Boys of Alabama, Lou Reed, Marcus King Band. We'll talk about all, I mean, his resume. If we could spend the full time just talking about your resume, dude, and then that would take, take it all up. But uh, how are you doing tonight, Peter? Pretty well, pretty well. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. So, um, so you are, you talk, you're in Nashville now, is that correct? Yes, I'm in Nashville now, uh, going on about three years, uh, made the move, you know, going on three years ago, uh, work, you know, uh, I was pretty busy down here with a bunch of different projects and it just yep. seemed to make, so we made the move. Man, it is amazing. I mean, it seems like it's like almost half the people I interview on my show are in Nashville. I had Billy Sheehan on a couple months ago. He's in Nashville now. Of course, Jennifer Hartswick, I'm sure you knew she's down there. Um, uh, Jeff Berlin, who's a really great bassist, he, 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 yeah, he's a New York guy, moved to, to uh, Nashville too. It's, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's obviously just ain't country music down there anymore. It seems like a pretty yeah. hot scene, right? Yeah, no, there's, there, there's a lot going on, you know, there, there really is. And, and, um, as you know, some, some great players too. So it's, you know, uh, on the musician side and uh, other sides as well, it's, it's, it's a really good place to be for music. That's great. And you said you've been down there for about three years or so? Yeah, going on about three years. Yeah. Was did you have like was it like a what you know what brought you there? Was there like someone that brought you there? Was it a gig thing or like or were you just like okay I'm just gonna plant my flag here? What was the what, what was yeah. the impetus? Question. Um, well, there were a few things. Um, you know, I was I was playing in Nashville a lot uh, and working here a lot with with the Blind Boys, uh, Amanda Shires, a um, few other folks. Yeah. Uh, so it just seemed to make sense uh, in eighteen. Um, I started uh, uh, touring with, with Amanda Shires a little bit. She's based out of Nashville. Um, Blind Boys are out of Atlanta. Oh, uh, right. A lot of people we're working with were down south. Um, so it just it just seemed to make sense. You know, I was doing a lot of sessions here as well at the time. So um, we just kind of went all in and, and, and did it. Uh, tr tried to, you know, straddle doing, keep, you know, keeping a footprint in New York, which right. was for a while but when um COVID hit it was just a little unrealistic right so, right 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 um, you know uh so um yeah yeah uh you know um great great spot to be and uh yep. beat me pretty well that's amazing so are you uh I know you lived in New York for many years are you a New York native I mean did you grow up there and stuff like that uh Upper West Side um 111th and Broadway wow uh, you are yeah. New Yorker yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 I'm still I'm still trying to think, you know, still trying to act, acclimate a little bit down right. here, um, you know, because there, there's, there's a, you know, it's definitely different, but it's, but, 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 uh, not that that's bad, right? Uh, but different in a lot of cool ways, you know, as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's incredible, man. So I imagine you were just like seeing, growing up, seeing just, you know, all kinds of shows growing up. I mean, I can't even imagine being a. You know, I'm, I'm from Cincinnati and, you know, I tried to sneak in every show I could when I was a kid, but it's like, you know, sometimes people come through here, sometimes they don't, but I mean, everything goes through there. So I'm sure you're seeing like, you know, growing, growing up, it must've been a great place to grow up uh, as a kid, right? I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, you know, uh, uh, when I was sort of, when, when I was growing up and, and, and was getting into music, you know, 14, 15, 16 um, in there, at, at that time in New York, you know, not to date myself, but, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, mid eighties, mid, mid to late eighties. And yeah, music scene in that city was, I mean, it was phenomenal. It, you yeah. know, there, there were clubs on almost every block, the great the sickest musicians, you know, uh, were, were all in there playing. I mean, you could just wander in from one. It, it was, it, it was a lot like New Orleans in that, in that respect, right? Just players, clubs everywhere, you know, music, just, you know, nonstop all, all night long. And, um, you know, it was a real, really, really, uh, you, you had the mix of, of so many people from so many different backgrounds that right. the variety and the different styles going on as well was just, I mean, it was, it was incredible. It, I was very, very, very fortunate to, uh, you know, kind of come up during that time in New now, York. 
did you start off like on piano? I'm assuming piano, like, you know, your, your parents, you know, did the piano lesson thing when you were growing up? Yep, yep. My mom, uh, before she passed, was an amazing pianist and she started me when I was super young. Yeah. You know, but in classical uh, for years and years. Uh, and then um, uh, about uh, ninth grade, I also started studying drums too. So, um, I got a you know a, 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 a kind of a good good background, and I uh, you know studied with some great piano teachers in New York, and also some uh, phenomenal drum teachers in New York City. When they I started going to uh, you know Drummers Collective when they were first sort of getting off the ground. Nice. Um, yeah, it was a great. I mean, it was a great scene. I mean, all the all the heavy cats were down there hanging out. And, you know, again, it was all these different styles in one place, and it was just right. It was amazing amazing place to be amazing place to be and then when, when did you kind of start you know dipping your toe under you know keys and scents and clavs and all that kind of stuff sure so um i i uh i uh i put together a, a band in, in in college um not you know put it together but i had a bunch of friends and we would play um and originally in that band i started on drums but a couple of the guys transferred out uh to other schools i jumped on the keys and um, I just kind of, you know, went with that. It, fe it felt at home and around that same yeah. time, thinking all the analog, you know, keyboards, like you were saying, you know, uh, Hammonds and, and Rhodes and Clavs and, you yeah. know, some all, all, all that good stuff. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of how it's it started for me. Uh, you know, we, 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 we were pretty busy on, on, a, on, a, on, a college, you know, on the college circuit up there, also played some clubs. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, we, 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 uh, we did pretty well throughout the Northeast, you know, yeah. that was our, 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 our zone. And what, what, what was the name of that band? I'm sorry, Peter, what was that band? Yeah. That band was called Peanut Funker and Jam. Oh, I love it. That's great. Right on. Originals or covers, a little combination of both? Yeah, combination of both. Yeah, okay. Yep. Nice. Um, both yeah it was really it was really uh really fun time man it was it was it was great uh then sort of that uh after that i uh, 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 a little while after that i moved back to new york city and just kind of jumped into the trenches of what was going on down there and gig gigging on both drums and keys and and uh really just hustling you know yep. uh, as much as i could you know and then um so people, I mean, I'm assuming like when through networking and stuff, people started hearing about you. I mean, were you gigging pretty equally on both drums and keys or was it like, okay, this guy's like does all these cool stuff with vintage key. I mean, like what kind of, you know, what yeah. was the, you know, kind of got your name out there, I guess is the question. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, well, no, that's, that's a good question for a while. Yeah. I was, I was playing on both, you know, I was, I was uh, uh, involved in a bunch of local projects in New York. Uh, I played some on keys. I played some on drums, yeah. you know, we would, all the you know all the uh smaller clubs in town yeah uh, cool but then I, uh you know then as i started to get uh you know kind of i guess you know bigger gigs you know like uh you know my first european tour and you know um working and who, with and who was that with peter uh that was with this band called muscle funk great okay. guitar. my buddy uh mike campbell uh there's a few mike campbells out there there's yeah the i was gonna say that sounds like a familiar name yeah yeah Funny, uh, you know, obviously Mike Campbell with, with, you know, with Tom Petty for, you know. Oh, Tom sure, Petty. right, right. And also uh, Mike Campbell is also uh, another New York guy uh, that was uh, Shop at Khan's longtime guitar player. Oh, wow. And there's my buddy Mike Campbell. Um, yeah. And so anyway, that was sort of my first uh, tour over there. And I was definitely kind of solidifying the keys thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I sort of graduated to like, you know, folks like Snow, if you remember Snow. Oh, wow. Like a Canadian rapper, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. wow. Dance hall, dance hall stuff. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, yeah. He had a couple big hits in Former, which was which was one of them. Right, right, right. Sure, I remember that tune, yeah. So I sort of got, you know, sort of, you know, as you were saying, kind of got my name out there, climbed the ladder a bit. Right, and you were doing keys with that too, with Snow, that was key. Yeah. Keys. Yeah, yeah, okay, got it, yeah. Yeah, and then um, after that, uh, it was it was pretty much keys full time, and the drums yep. were just uh, studio projects. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, kind of on uh, you know, kind of on low key. You wow. know, every while I'd play, I'd play drums. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, my uh, blues band at, based out of New York City, Tangiers Blues Band. I'll play drums with them every once in a while. Nice. Uh, that's a fun hang. Um, but yeah, pretty much it's it's keys. It's right. keys. And then, you know, obviously you did some of the, that, that national touring or international touring. And then, uh, uh, like, how did you end up hooking up with, like, Greg Allman? I and mean, was that a while after that? Or was that, is that, is that pretty close in the timeline? No, no, that, that, was a, that was a while after that. Um, you know, I was sort of doing my thing, climbing the ladder, you know, yep. getting better and better gigs. Um, and then in 2008, um, uh, a mutual friend of mine and uh, a really great, you know, Jason Crosby, great uh, musician, plays with so. this, uh, he, he, actually now he's with Jackson Brown. Um, oh, nice, nice. Uh, keys player, great uh, violin player, sings. Anyway, uh, Jason was doing the Blind Boys gig, was getting oh, pretty big. They needed to bring someone in. Jason introduced uh, me to Joey Williams, who's the Blind Boys music director. Yeah. We met off. Uh, so then I was in with the Blind Boys around 2008. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, you know, kind of still sort of building up, um, you know, playing with them was great. I got to play with I mean, you know, some of the greatest artists, you know, Aretha, you know, Alan Toussaint. Yeah, I, mean, Africa, I can't imagine, man. That's it was Lou Reed. I mean, it was, it was, it was awesome. It was, yeah. it was, it was fantastic. And then I get, you know, flash forward a few years later. Um, it was 2013, and uh, the Blind Boys were in town uh, in, in New York, uh, rather, <laughs> in New York uh, at Carnegie Hall doing a benefit for Prince. Oh. That's night uh was one of the uh almonds runs at the beacon they used to do you know the 14 night oh, run right 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 of course yeah. i was actually the beacon uh because it was a singers only gig at carnegie hall so i was watching the almonds and uh, uh warren haynes uh came up to me and said he wanted you know he was you know looking to have the blind boys sit in tomorrow night mm -hmm. uh and asked if you know i would i would be into sitting in and i was like yeah of course yeah you know? sure uh, that's how those worlds collided, you know, wow. blind. Okay, he got it. I got up there, you know, with Greg. That's how I met, you know, kind of Greg professionally, you know. Yeah, yeah. Although we had met once or twice before, but just, you know, um, you know, kind of at a show backstage. He, you right, know, right, right. Before, you know, any of that was known. So anyway, that's where I met him professionally. And then about six months later, four, six months later, my buddy Scott Sherrard, who's now with uh, Little Feet, Mm -hmm. um was greg's md and we went way back on the new york scene uh they were looking to uh, uh make a, a keys change in the band called me asked asked me what i was doing uh and said he had a tour with greg and you know what i what i you know what i want to do it i was like of course so i called the blind boys and i i told them uh you know i got good news and bad news what do you want first and they were like well give us give us the uh you know give us the bad news i was like well the bad news is Greg Allman called. The good news is Greg Allman called. Right, you know? right, right. So, but I, I, I have a great relationship with those guys. And, you sure. know, honestly, they were so cool about it. You know, wished me nothing but the best. And it, it just made the whole thing, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, those those worlds sort of coming together was was really super cool. So I ended up getting Greg's gig, uh, uh, you know, uh, early uh, early 2014, I think. Okay, so uh, not not that long ago then. I mean, not, you know, not that long. Ago, yeah, no. yeah. Um, and when Greg wasn't touring, I would still still go, you know, still tour with the Blind Boys or you know Amanda or whoever else I, I, I've been, you know, was was working with at the time. Right. Um, that's how all that went down. Yeah. Wow. And then when, when did you start doing? Uh, you know, I know you you got your own band too, the Peter Le uh, Peter Levin band. Is that something that's fairly recent or is that something you've been kind of just fitting in between dates or how, how does that work? You know? Well, yeah, no, um, I, I, uh, Peter Levin band, I, you know, I've been playing in, in and around out of New York for, for a long, long time. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, you know, um, I haven't done a gig down here like that yet. Uh, and the, and the record came about, uh, I had done a bunch of session work, uh, at fame down in Muscle Shoals. Oh, nice. Uh, with, you know, with Rodney and 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 and, and the crew down there, uh, and you know, I'd done a couple sessions with the Blind Boys. Greg recorded Southern Blood down there. You know, the, his his last record. Yeah. Um, so, I uh, it was important to me to record that record down there. 
You know, um, I've been playing a lot of the songs that I recorded for years, uh, you know, out of, you know, based out of New York and, and things like that. But, um, yeah. you know, going down to record the, rec the record there was special because I was connected to it in, in, in a lot of ways. And uh, so that's what happened. I had, a, I went down there, recorded 18 songs. Um, uh, I, I sort of had a, a bunch of my friends come down. Uh, uh, one sort of core band was, was my buddies from the Blind Boys, uh, Joey Williams, uh, Stevie Ray Ladson, Austin Moore. They were sort of one core band. And then I brought my New York uh, uh, band down there to record another set of songs. Uh, the songs that the Blind Boys are, uh, Blind Boys band and, and uh, are on are, are, are uh, the name of the record is called Saturday Night, Sunday Morning. Okay. Saturday night meaning kind of the more bluesier, greasier side. Yep. Sunday being more gospely side. Nice. So that also reflected kind of in the bands as well. You know, Blind Boys Band because we've been playing with them for years now. Right. That had you know a little bit more gospel feel. Uh, and then you know my buddies from New York was the more bluesier, swankier kind of, kind of, kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's you know. Hopefully that wasn't too long-winded for you. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. No, it's great to hear. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of. And then I had a bunch of special guests: the Blind Boys themselves, the singers. Oh, great. Max Jack Pearson's on it. Spooner, Spooner Olam's on it, which was wow. which was. Awesome. Uh, Mark Quinones from the Almonds, and who yeah. now with the Boobies is there. Uh, my buddy Bobby Allende, uh, a bunch. You know, uh, uh, my buddy Eric Krasno and uh, Schmees yeah. from. Le yeah, of course. Um, just so, just uh, Lanisha Randolph, uh, you know, just and, just and that's out now too, right? That's out, like that's available yeah. now, right? Yep. It's the first single, uh, May seventh, and the record is going to be released shortly. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, the full album is not yet uh, out, but it will be in a few days. Oh, that's wonderful. Super excited about that. So um, I can't wait to hear that too as well. And you said you recorded that down at the studio, the Muscle Shoals studio? Is yeah, down at the studios in Muscle Shoals. Um, wow. About 90% of it was recorded there. And then while I was sort of on tour, I would sort of fill in and sure. kind of, you know, pop into studios where I could to try to finish some things and so yeah. on and so on. And then it was mixed. Uh, by uh, Don Strigley, who's a man, just a fantastic, you know, en engineer. Um, Muscle Shoals, Muscle Shoals guy, just killed the mixes. He also we met when he was uh, engineering uh, Southern Blood uh, oh, nice. down there as well. And um, you know, he, uh, you know, really, really, uh, really killed it. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. You know, wow, so. that's that's incredible, man. That's super exciting. Um, so let's jump to to now, and you're obviously quite, you know, you tour probably about as much of anybody out there, which is from all the projects you've done. Um, well, before we even get to now, like, and I usually I usually start off the show with this, but we started talking about Nashville first. But um, you know, this past you know 16 months, you know, how have you been? Uh, how you been hanging in there? You know, to like getting like yeah. Nashville. Well, I'll tell you, um, it was tough as as yeah. I'm for. Yeah. Every in our, you know, you know, every musician and and, yep. and person and to, you know uh, everyone in the industry. Yeah. Um, luckily, um, over the years, I've kind of built up uh, sort of my own uh, uh, home studio business. I, a lot of folks send me their files. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rig at home. Uh, you know, I put my keys on it. You yeah. Know, you know where it is, and then I send it back. So, so that was a real blessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that was a real blessing because I was able to, you know, still still work uh, and 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 create uh, and, and you know, um, uh, squeak by. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, and uh, but, you know, th that was, you know, kind of really it for a little while because all right. the students were totally shut down. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody was gigging. Um, then it opened up a little bit and I did some stream shows. I did a couple cool stream shows with Marcus. Oh, we nice. did, you know, a uh, three night thing. One of the nights was the last waltz and, uh, you know, they were all theme nights and yeah. cool. Uh, so yeah, I did a bunch of stream stuff, did a bunch of these ISO lounging shows with, with uh, Amanda uh, and Jason uh, Isbell. That was cool. Yeah. So there were little things to keep going, you know, um, yeah. and playing stuff, but you know, really the hardest part was just not having a crowd. Yeah. You know, that, that, you know, and, and, and you, you don't, you don't really realize, uh, until that's gone, uh, 
uh, how important and how much of the show it is as the playing itself almost. Right. The feedback you get from the crowd and the, I mean, when you know, uh, we, we started, Marcus started up again mid-July, we did a small, uh, small club, American Legion, uh, 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 you know, uh, in Nashville. Yeah. And then hearing the folks in that room, it's a small room, but yeah. hearing them yell and cheer was, I mean, it was, it was priceless. It was like, yeah. you know, that, you know, so not, not only was it tough, I guess, financially as it was for everyone, but it was tough in that respect too, right. you know, you know, missing that. And, 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 uh, you know, that's just one observation, but yeah, it was tough, but you know, what, what are you going to do? I mean, right. you gotta, gotta hang in there. You, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta hang in there and, 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 you know, try to get by. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of folks out there that, that had it a lot worse. Yeah, you know, for sure. So, you know, in, in some ways I was really, even though all that was going on, I was still really blessed and, and, and fortunate, you know, everybody in your family was okay and safe and everything made it through it all. Yeah. Everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I hope yours, yours as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 for sure, sure, yeah, definitely. Well, let's yeah. zap to, to now. Um, so, you know, it's funny. I had, um, uh, J you know, Joey Porter from Motet. I know, I know jo Joey loosely. Great keys player. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Another one. Like you guys are like two peas in the pod, but like in yeah, different, different yeah, parts yeah. of the pod. You know, it's all yeah. vintage keys, the whole thing. You know. Yeah. Well, long yeah. story short, we played a show up in Columbus. Um, it was like a uh thing uh just like kind of a little super group thing that someone put together this is like mid you know july 10th or 12th or something like that you know and that sure. weekend it was starting to i mean it still felt weird but it's like oh things are starting to feel normal people are coming out blah 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 you know you would have thought i talked to him that was a couple weeks ago you would have thought that was like you know two years ago now because things have like you know changed so much even the last even the last week for that i mean it's like seems like things are changing daily now so um you know, so it feels like we're kind of on that weird bubble again right now, you know, where like it's you, you just don't know what, what, you know, and it depends on what part of the country you're in and all kinds of stuff. So your own gut, you know, and you're kind of in a central place, kind of like I'm in Cincinnati. I'm about four hours north of you and Nashville is kind of in that in-between zone. Not quite. I mean, you are the south, but it's not deep south and, right. you know, not not heavy Midwest either. So right. what do you, uh, you know, your own gut and from other musicians you talk to, other industry folks, um, you know, for 2021, heading into 2022, where do you think we're at with live music right now in terms of dealing with all this? I mean, obviously, I know you're not a scientist, so, but just sure. feeling, yeah. Um, man, that, you know, that, that that's a great question. You know, I I, uh, I do have some friends on the industry side that that are a little nervous, you know, some, some, yeah. some non-musician side or right. maybe, you know, some of them have, you know, are, are sort of, you know, smelling maybe another shutdown. Again, I don't want to speculate too much, right, but right, right. conversations folks are having, what do we do if it happens? Um, the trickle thing is what's freaking me. Like daily, like right now, it's like little trickling, you know, like a show here or a tour here, you know, and it feels kind of like that, that same feeling we had back in whatever March of last year or whatever it was a little bit, you know. Just It's just going to get, you know, just going to get more and more and, yeah. So, I mean, not that it will, but I guess that that is the fear. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, um, the, you know, I, I got to say it was a little, uh, a little, I, I hope I'm not getting sidetracked from the question, but it no, was a little, ahead. little um, getting back out there, you know, around all the people again was, uh, you know, it was a little, uh, I mean, it was awesome. Don't get me wrong. It was awesome. Right. Sort of had to readjust and, you know get 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 comfortable again with things yeah. that you just took for granted forever yeah you know that was, that was a little that was a little bizarre to sort of to sort of to, you know to get used to that again yeah uh, you know i'm 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 hoping obviously i'm hoping that it doesn't come come to that you sure. know most of the festivals and stuff that i've been to even even though um you know folks are doing a pretty good job uh uh trying to minimize things yeah you know risk and all that stuff you know kind of kind of uh uh clamp down on on access and things like that which which helps you know uh i really hope it doesn't you know doesn't go down to that but 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 uh uh you know uh hopefully hopefully you know um venues now are starting to require proof of either vax or yeah. or or negative tests i mean which personally i mean obviously everyone's entitled to their own opinion 
personally, yeah. I think that's I think that's cool. You know, I mean, we've we you know musicians and techs and everyone in that business has been out of work so long after that, and 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 you know, it's it's you know, it's it's uh, it's important that 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 you know we all stay safe. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize that, like, that come to shows, they, you know, all they think about are us, like the musician side of stuff. Like, as you, as you well know, there are so many more people that are involved in this circle, you know, whether it be crew or catering or merch people or ticket people. Or, I mean, we could just go on and on forever about yeah. that, which they're all relying on as much as we are, you know? Right, right, right. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, you know, you're totally right. People really only see us up on stage and don't realize that how much behind the scenes yeah. is really on production. You know, like you're saying, yeah. I mean, all, all, all that, you know, all that stuff. And quite honestly, you know, uh, you know, without folks like that, you know, there really isn't a show. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, and, and, and so, you know, uh, uh, so that's why it's important too that people stay safe. So, so, so that those folks, yep. you know, not musicians, but the folks behind the scenes that that really make the machine run can be can be safe too. Right, because which that's what made me think when you were talking about that is is it's uh, you know we can kind of stay on stage and be a little detached, you know, in that little semi safety zone, you know, it, um, where the people, the other people, a lot of the people that we're talking about, I mean, they're right there in the thick of everything too, as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, so let's uh, let's let's obviously end on a, on a positive note. Um, so, what have you you got your new record? Uh, as you said, May seventh is that when the whole album drops? Is that correct? Oh, uh, will drop May seventh, uh, and the album I mean, is the yeah, the single called uh, "Faith Will See You Through," uh, which has the Blind Boys guesting on there, Jack Pearson guesting on there, um, uh, uh, dropped May seventh. Right, right. Uh, uh, we're in freaking August. Sorry, but this is what I'm saying. In COVID world, I have no idea what day or month we're in anymore. It could be Christmas. We could be talking to me like, okay, cool. I, you know, I have no idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And then the, the album uh, uh, shortly uh, in a few days. Oh, nice. That's awesome. And of course, it'll be available at all like, you know, the normal places people, you know, for downloading or streaming or whatever the case may be. All of that. Uh, uh, so yeah, you, you'll, you'll be able to, you'll be able to find it anywhere. <laughs> That's great, man. That's so exciting. And I had no idea about the, I mean, I, I, I tried to do always do some background info and I didn't know about the drum thing. And now that, that just like brought it to a whole, cause I started off as a drummer too. And then moved over to, oh, okay. I always say I'm a bass player. I'm a, I'm a drummer that plays notes. That's how I feel in terms of the way I create right. bass lines. That's the way my mind works. You know, I'm creating a beat that's add notes to it, you know? So think about it, you know, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So, well, man, uh, Peter, I can't thank you so much for being on the show. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm super excited, you know, incredible, great luck with the album. And um, I watched some of your stuff on your website. I, I mean, I love watching you play Moog, man. I could do, you know, I'm all about that, man. Your feels feel. And I, and I was like, damn, this guy's got good rhythm. And now I, the drummer thing, it's like, okay, I get it now. So it all, it, it all make all the, everything makes sense now. So that's great. Well, thanks appreciate that and uh hopefully you know we'll, we'll be on the stage together yeah tonight. man awesome. uh definitely man I'm, that's what i say to everybody on the show and 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 you know let's it feels like we're, we're getting close you know so yeah. I, you know so you know and hopefully it'll be soon all right well brother take care of yourself stay safe out there you and your family and uh, we shall see you soon brother thank you so Dude. much for being on the show bye-bye bye-bye